I ask the question, is there anything in the bird brain, let's say the songbird in particular, that when damaged has certain deficits as to what occurs with the human brain? And the answer is yes. In songbirds, there's these structures here, in, color-coded in red again, that when damaged prevents the bird from imitating song, but they can still sing. It's what we call like an aphasia of song. Well, there are areas in the human brain, in the front part of the cortex, in the basal ganglia here, and in the thalamus, that when damaged, we actually have difficulty producing appropriate speech, like I'm talking now. So if uh, this area here, what's called the dorsolateral cortex, and another region next to it called Broca's area, a very famous area in neurobiology, we go, uh, ah, we have problems sequencing vocalizations together, but we can still speak. Same thing for these birds, and we have problems imitating. In birds, these regions are connected in a loop uh, that, uh, with the thalamus down here. And in non-human primates, motor areas next to where you would expect to find these regions are also connected in a loop in the brain. Likewise, in birds, these areas project to a region of the motor pathway, like the RA nucleus here, that sends out the uh, signals for producing the learned vocalizations. And in non-human primates, such loops for motor behavior are connected to the motor cortex. So we think we got a parallel system here in the human brain, just with a different cortical organization. So now, <clears throat> what I'm showing you here again is the human brain, uh, color-coded uh, com in comparison with the zebra finch brain, and here is that loop that I told you about. And here is this loop here in the songbird brain, and then the output to the motor pathway. I didn't color code it in yellow here. I'm now just color coding all the brain regions uh, to be either cortical or basal ganglia or thalamic structures. And what we've learned from a lot of comparative study, a lot more still needs to be uh, uh, looked at, but this is what we know so far, is that amongst birds, they have these four brain areas that produce or imitate the sounds, and in the non-vocal learning species, like a chicken or a pigeon, we don't have any evidence of these four brain structures. Instead, we have these brainstem regions that are involved in the production of innate vocalizations. And in the human brain, likewise, we have all these four brain structures in the cortex and the basal ganglia, uh, but in a non-vocal learning mammal, the best we can find is a four-brain structure in non-human primates, a macaque, which is basically a monkey, that makes connections but makes an indirect projection to these brainstem neurons that control the voice, but not a direct projection. And when damage in a macaque, this, they, they can still produce their innate sounds. So it doesn't seem to be used for vocalizations. Another difference here is that in the birds and in humans, our motor cortex region makes a direct input projection to the areas that control the voice, something not found in any of the other species that produce innate sounds. So this direct projection is thought to be necessary for the uh, evolution of song or speech uh, pathways in humans. So in summary, what we have here is a remarkable case of convergence, not only amongst vocal learning birds, but amongst birds with humans for these four brain areas that control what I'm doing now. And the big question has been is, how did this come about? Is it independent evolution now not only three times amongst birds, but over 300 million years? Or was there a common ancestor that had these brain pathways and the songbirds and, uh, not the songbirds, the like relatives of songbirds like chicken or relatives of humans like monkeys lost this ability, which would be quite remarkable. Or maybe everybody has some type of rudimentary pathways. An alternative, I've been told, is also um, could it be some type of designer? But uh, I didn't have any kind of answer to this, um, except more recently in the last two years, I've come up with an answer. And that's what we're going to talk about next.